In this video we'll talk about timing diagrams and how they can be used to help you develop your line ladder project. So for this demo we'll use a system that has a conveyor, start stop buttons to start the whole thing up, there will be a horn, and then a system lockout that will prevent the conveyor from running if uh, you stop the conveyor or it shuts down on overload. So let's go through here. We'll start the system by pushing the start button. Immediately the horn will sound for 30 seconds. At the end of the 30 second period the conveyor will automatically start up. No further need of pushing an additional start button. And the conveyor will continue to run until such time as you push the stop button or an overload opens. At that point, a 45 second lockout period will start and that will prevent a conveyor restart. So anytime within that 45 seconds, the conveyor is unable to restart regardless of why it's shut down. If we look down here, you'll see the a momentary line for the start button indicating that it was pushed at this point here. At that point the horn turns on and you can see the horn is on and I have the cell width set to indicate 5 seconds per cell so it's 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30 so you can see the 30 seconds here that the horn is on. Horn turns off and immediately the conveyor will start and the conveyor will run It'll stay running until you push the stop button. Up here at this point the stop button is pushed which caused the conveyor to start and the 45 second lockout period to start. So if I were to try and push the start button anytime within this 45 second lockout period it would prevent the conveyor from starting up. That's the simple portion of the conveyor timing diagram and that shows all the functions but it doesn't show any timing for what's happening inside the PLC. So let's go to the next timing diagram. Again here's your same timing diagram here that I showed on the previous page and then down here I added a few items. System run or sys run as I call it. It will turn on immediately when the start button is pushed and off when the stop button is pushed. That's what runs all of the items. Now if we run both our on delay and off delay off of sys run makes things a little easier. So here's an on, a timer output from our on delay timer and you can see this is our delay period right here and at the end of that delay period the output will turn on and then it turns off immediately when the timer is disabled. Typical on delay timer. The delay occurs at the beginning, the output turns on, and then turns off immediately when the timer is disabled. Now the off delay is a little different. Its output turns on immediately and stays on and at this period here's our 45 second off delay. That's our time right here that the 45 second off delay takes place. So you, so you can see with an off delay timer it is going on entirely the entire time, time that sysrun is on plus an additional 45 seconds. Now we could do some things like starting the off delay over here once the on delay timer enables but that just tends to complicate things by like trying to keep things simple. Now let's go to the next timing diagram and you can see we added a couple of items. Start delay, that is a timing period that is on only when we are in our on delay portion. And shutdown delay, that is on only when we are in our shutdown portion or shutdown delay. Interestingly enough, the start delay, if we look up here, you notice that the start delay is the same as the horn. 
And if you look over here, the shutdown delay is the same as the lockout. I go to the next, show you some transitions where they have here at here under one, that's where the system is started up. At point two, that's the end. That's the end of your first on delay. So at point two, the horn will stop, the conveyor will start. At point three over here, you see the stop button is pushed here. The conveyor shuts down and the beginning of the lockout period starts and at point four the lockout period ends. You can see how all those other timing signals correspond to each of those various points there and what's happening out there. So now let's go and look at the ladder logic for this. So over here I've got my start and my stop, and my overload, and my lockout contacts. Right now I'm sitting here, nothing's happening, so I can start I'm going to start this really fast and you can see the horn is on. Now I'm going to stop it and you can see immediately the lockout is engaged there and I'm not going to be able to start it until that 45 seconds expires and you can see the off delay timer counting here. I'm going to speed that up. And then now we've gone and the lockout is back disabled. For those of you wondering what I just did, I highlighted the timer, held down the control key, hit enter, and that allows me to set whatever time I want into that timer. That's the CV, the current value for the timer. Okay, then you hit enter again and that resets the timer. So if you're troubleshooting a long timer, it's kind of nice you can go in there and change that value. Now, let's go back up here to the start. I'll push the start button. My system is starting. You can see the horn running. The conveyor is not running. Knockout is not engaged. This timer is counting up. Okay. On delay timer is not turned on yet. And down here, these two rungs are the same. So I am in sys run. The on delay has not turned on yet. And so the horn is on. And as soon as I, that timer gets to 300, now you can see my on delay timer. Coil is now on because the time has expired. And the horn shut off. Now over here is sys run and the on delay time has completed the conveyor is running. Now if I hit stop, the on delay timer is going to shut down because sys run will turn off and remember that on delay timers immediately turn off when they lose their power flow. But the off delay, again, it'll lose its power flow but the off delay will stay on to complete that 45 second lockout. So I'm going to come over here, toggle the stop. You can see I lost power flow to both timers. The on delay timer immediately went off, but the off delay timer is staying on. Sys run is off over here, so there will no, not be any horn output. And I come down here that sys run is off, so the conveyor is off. Sys run is off, so I have power flow through here. I still have timer power over here. And so I'm still in my lockout period. And I remain in my lockout period for 45 seconds. So I won't be able to start this. As you can see in rung number one, there's no way I can start it until I get power flow through these lockout contacts. Which I have now means I could go over there and restart the system. Now I'm putting this together, I have my start delay rung, which is here, and you notice I'm using a memory coil. And that rung could be deleted because it is the same as the horn. So I could delete rung number six, it's not needed. 
And the same thing is down here with rung number 13, my shutdown delay. It's the same as my lockout, so that's not needed. Those two, those two coils are shown only because they correspond to the timing diagram in the development of all of this. So that's it. If I look at all these coils here, you'll see that I have a corresponding line. Every one of my coils are shown here. In addition, all of my input controls are shown here. So those are the items on my timing diagram and using the timing diagram to help build the ladder logic, which is over here.